Citigroup, advised that the world is dividing into the plutonomy and the rest. In a plutonomy, there is no such animal as the US consumer or the UK consumer or the Russian consumer. There are rich consumers, few in number, but disproportionately with the gigantic slice of income and consumption that they are able to take. Then there are the rest, the non-rich, the multitudinous many, who only account for surprisingly small bites of the nation's consumption. And it goes on, I mean, it, 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 it says things which are relevant to us, so let me just read one more quote. The rich of today are also different from yesterday. Our light speed, globally connected economy has led to the rise of a new um, superclass, which consists to a notable degree of first and second generation wealth. Its members are highly educated, jet setting meritocrats who feel they are des the deserving winners of a tough economic competition. And many of them, as a result, have an ambivalent attitude towards those who did not succeed so spectacularly. Well, this attitude is, in some sense, being reflected in corporate strategies. You don't have the money? Too bad. Um, which is interesting because the last time we saw people who openly reflected such attitudes was in the novels of Charles Dickens a hundred years ago or more than a hundred at this point, um, 140, 50 years ago. So this is impacting the way service is being rendered, this bifurcation of the consuming public. So we have an imbalance. <coughs> you have reduced service in many different areas, or more effort being required by the customer rather than by the service provider, this, this uh, self-checkout, self-check-in phenomenon, um, and leading to a diminished, in many cases, not in every case, a diminished quality of life. And again, that is somewhat subjective. As those of you in the back of the room in the peanut gallery, the cheap seats there, you like to do things by yourself. You like to go on the internet and spend hours trying to find the right flight. I don't. Um, and of course, it's all because of this, or largely because of that. So let's look at some of these examples. And please, at any point, like, uh, just like um, Hans did, you, you please feel free to disagree with me. Well, I disagree on many aspects. Oh, good, good. Wonderful. <laughs> I'll let you talk. But. Thank you. You'll get your chance. <laughs> okay, the, the travel agent we know always took a commission for the work they did. And nowadays, or I should say up until very recently, we had, with, with all the internet sites for bookings, that travel agents were almost becoming dinosaurs. Almost. Um, but there has been a resurgence of travel agents. It's become a niche business, but there has been a resurgence because so many people who, like me, were born in the electromechanical age find the fact that if you want to do a complicated booking by yourself online, it is indeed a complicated task. And it spends a lot of time, you spend a lot of time and you often are not satisfied with the result. Whereas if you have a professional who gets paid to spend all their time to do that, you very often can get the service done more efficiently, there's that word again, more efficiently, and it's worth the extra charge. Do you agree with that, Hans? Yeah, so where's the problem? There are still travel agents around. What's the problem is that you are paying more for it, and it's hard to find, and it is not ubiquitous. Well, I recently booked a flight, and I'm very happy doing it myself online. But you're not the only one. Some of us really do like to do that when it is convenient and easy. Um, also, the choices you have, the alternatives you could see, 
Oh, that's an interesting one. I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to bring it up later, but I'll do it now. Um, how many of you, again, this is my informal market research, have noticed that when you go to the various online, let's just talk air, air, air uh, flights, when you go to, you know, Orbitz, Expedia, Kayak, whatever, how many of you notice that the price differential has almost disappeared? No matter where you go, the price for a given flight will be more or less the same unless you go, for example, to the site of the particular airline that you're trying to book, and very often the airline site has the lowest price rather than these um, um, consolidators. Yes, yes, Will. Mm -hmm. Well, by the way, where are the people with the, uh, with the loudspeaker, with the microphone? Please, give Will a soft spoken guy. <laughs> well, I went to Shanghai in December and uh, I was trying to compare prices uh, with Expedia. And I found out that Expedia gave me a price flying, flying out of flying out of the new terminal, terminal, international terminal, like from Haneda. It was $900. Mm -hmm. And I went on ANA website to offer a special promotion for, for a flight mm -hmm. Same flight from the same terminal. Right. Yeah, and the airline was offering a lower price than the consolidated. Plus, it was more flexible. So they mean, you can cancel up to the certain Yes. And the media yes. is prepaid, and, and once you prepaid, and then you want to change it, and you, you got to call the. It's a nuisance. You got to call God knows where. So. God knows where. Well, that, I'm going to get to that. Yeah. I'm going to get to the God knows where. But that that is interesting. Um, again, this was not a complicated booking. It's sort of simple point to point. My bookings always are complicated because I always want to go to the farthest point from Tokyo that you can possibly get to, not because I want to, but because I have to. And uh, so I'm always, you know, fuming at these sites which don't really help me. Okay. Um, internet banking is a great convenience up to a point. Um, but... With internet banking, you have the issue of security. Because it's become, because it's a public network rather than uh, just going to your bank or using your bank ATM or what have you, there are always security issues. So, passwords. Um, not every bank makes you change your password. But one bank I have an account with. Uh, and I need to keep the money there, makes me change my password every three months, which drives me crazy. Because the whole purpose of password is something you don't have to write down, you remember it. I have exhausted all the potentially <laughs> rememberable, memorable passwords in my brain, and now I always have to write it down, which of course creates a security risk. So there is that. Now, please, I'm not a Luddite. I don't want to sound like a curmudgeon. I find many things about the Internet really wonderful. But there is the other side, which, um, if I were in Israel, somebody of a certain age would say, Internet, schminternet, just dismissing it that way. And sometimes one has to dismiss it. Um, and here we already, we already covered the... The unaided airport check-in, um, I, I had an example where I had to check in at Boston Logan Airport and I was going to Tokyo and I, I had a huge suitcase.